I first would have seen The Exterminating Angel along with a lot of other Buñuel films. When I was in my early teens, I expect that the BBC would have had a season of his films. I was just immediately drawn to the you know, playful surrealism of it. I think that the film has a highly tuned sense of the absurd. I mean, it's at one level a fairy tale, and that's very good for any composer, especially me, I like that world. It's also a kind of a horror story as well, of course. There are elements of horror in it. And the macabre, the dreamlike, uh, all of this feeds into music very naturally for me. The story of The Exterminating Angel is that um, uh, a very well-off bourgeois family have been out for the evening at the opera and they've invited some friends back along with the leading singer of the opera and they arrive back to the house. But while they've been travelling back from the opera, um, the servants of the house have decided that they can't really stay there, that something is making them want to get out of that house. By the time the guests all arrive with the host and hostess, uh, the house is virtually empty apart from just a few people. And they're baffled by this. They sit down and they begin to have dinner. They leave that dinner and they go into the salon to hear one of their number, give a piano recital. And as that ends, people make to leave. It's time to go home. It's quite late. But each time they try to go, they sort of turn around and speak to someone else again. Uh, or someone calls them and they run over and a conversation starts up again. And in this rather circular fashion, you realise, slowly but surely, that no one's actually going anywhere. They're not leaving the room. Something's stopping them. The main element of the set consists of a huge door frame, like a sort of threshold that you would have from one room into another. It's a very, very exciting piece of scenery because it has its own internal mechanism so that it can float around the stage on its own in any way. The costumes range from the late 1950s into the early 60s. I would say the main influence is the world of Balenciaga or Dior or the, the great couture designers. This subject, I think, has led to a music which is appropriate for the different characters of the piece. I mean, one of the things is all the characters on the stage think they're at an elegant party for the f most of the first act. So the music needs to allow them to enjoy the party. There, there's a, there are waltzes, there's melody. There, there should be a feeling of kind of um, elegance and, and actually um, it's an expensive party. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be glittering. But at the same time, for the audience who kind of have a sense of what might be happening to them, that they've entered a kind of vortex of, of horror without knowing it, the music has these kind of undertones and it pulls downwards and there are these distortions. It's, um, I think, very, very accessible for a new piece of work. Um, it's a complex score, obviously, but, but thrilling. <laughs> <laughs>